Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth part of this 12th MOOC dedicated to the production of sustainable biofuels, namely biojet and biodiesel. In the fourth part, we talked about the feedstock supply and our objectives in terms of maximum impurity content. Let's now see how to remove these impurities. This pretreatment is typically carried out in two stages, a degumming section and a bleaching section. The purpose of the degumming section is to remove most of the phosphorus, metals and chlorine. In this first section of degumming, we will remove the gums. These gums are phosphatides molecules that concentrate phosphorus. This molecule, the phosphatides, are present under several chemical structures. Some of these chemical structures are called hydrotable, and in this case, a water degumming is enough to remove them. But some are in so-called non-hydrotable form, which is why we will inject a solution of acid to hydrate them. Water will be injected to transfer these hydrated phosphatides into the aqueous phase. Then the hydrated gums will be separated from the oil phase by centrifugation. We then recover the gums on one side and the oil phase on the other. More precisely, the oil enters the pretreatment unit at a temperature of about 20 degrees C. Then it is heated up with a steam in a heat exchanger up to 60 to 70 degrees C. At this temperature, acid, either phosphoric or citric, is injected at a content of about 0.05 to 0.2 weight percent of the feed rate, depending on the gum content in the feed stock. The oil plus acid mixture then enters a steered reactor. An effective mixture is critical to ensure proper dispersion of the acid in the oil. It should be noted that acid ionizes most of the metals, which is why metals are also removed in the degumming section. Then, water is injected, typically 2-4 to four weight percent of the feed rate depending on the gum content of the feedstock, and a hydrolysis reaction of phosphatides in the steel reactor follows. The residence time in this reactor is about 30 minutes. The whole thing is then centrifuged to separate the gums from the oil. These gums are exported and processed in general off-site. In some designs, a second degumming step can be performed to further lower the phosphorus content and relieve the downstream bleaching section. In this case, water is added again, typically 5 to 10 weight percent of the feed rate and the oil is separated again from the aqueous phase by centrifugation. We see here that for a 100 tons per hour feed rate unit, the steam consumption is about 1000 multiplied by the heat capacity of the oil, I mean about 0.5 kilocalorie per kilo and per degree C, and multiplied by the temperature difference between 15 and 65 degrees C. I mean an energy quantity of about 2.5 gigacalories per hour, or an equivalent of 5 tons per hour of low pressure steam. At the outlet of the degumming section, a phosphorus content between 20 to 50 ppm and a metal content of about 50 ppm is typically achieved, and all the inorganic chlorine that has solubilized in the water has been removed. But despite this first treatment, I mean degumming section, we see that we are still not in line with the maximum values requested at the input of the hydro treatment unit. The bleaching section is therefore made for this. Well, that's it for today. See you very soon for the next part. In the meantime, do not hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel and please answer the quiz. The link is available in the description of the video. See you very soon. Bye-bye.